when my mother died in um, 1979 of cancer, and my father died in 1989. And so when my dad died, we needed to keep the family together. And because usually when your parents die, your family just sort of go on their own. So each sibling take their family, become their own little kingdom unto themselves. And but we didn't want that to happen. We want us to, wanted us to stay close, and stay close because of what we learned from them. Uh, and it would help build that, make it, uh, give us support, and make it more solid. And so we came up with the idea of coming up with a 501c3 foundation. We knew nothing about foundation. Uh, and also at that particular time, my mother had become a Hawaiian icon. And so we thought we'd call the foundation after her name. Uh, so we did. And, you know, everybody praises the Kanakaole name, but she wasn't a Kanakaole. My father was a Kanakaole, although the Kanakaole side was very strong, strong people. And so she did, a, she did a great favor for my father's family as well, as well as for her family. And so with that, we took off with the Edith Kanakaole Foundation. We learned how to run a 501c3. Um, <clears throat> we pulled together all of the Hawaiian concepts that we grew up with and, uh, and built upon it. Um, and then we knew that and continued the halal because the halal actually belonged to my mother's family and my mother's mother, who, who was steep in hula kapu. And then she taught hula throughout all of our lives. We learned hula from my grandmother. And uh, eventually when my grandmother died, we continued with my mother. Um, so hula was a very strong part of our Hawaiian education. Um, and chanting was a very strong part of our Hawaiian education. My mother eventually went to teach in the college system. Uh, she didn't have a college degree, but she was um, articulate. She knew her culture well. And this is when Hawaiian culture was just becoming important enough to teach at the college level. And so they took her into the college system. She taught at the, um, the um, community college first and then went up to the university level. And so she, had, she was just becoming an, an icon, a Hawaiian icon. And so we took off with her name in, for our foundation. But our mission in the foundation uh, was uh, or is to elevate Hawaiian intelligence. Um, we didn't like the idea of, you know, people always putting down Hawaiian thoughts and looking at what we did as Hawaiian as mediocre. Uh, and so we knew that our, our ancestors were very intelligent in order to survive out here in the middle of the Pacific. Um, they had to know their environment well. And so that's what we wanted to be able to get into and understand. And so we knew that we could find that in, in chance. And so we started to search in, in chance. Read through all of the books. It started with David Malo, as I said earlier. And um, uh, Kamakao, John Papa E.E., e all of those books first, uh, all of the Hawaiian books first, and then we went into the Bishop Museum um, memoirs, um, as well as the uh, Emerson's writing, um, and uh, some of the other writers, and all of those um, uh, foreign writers who came in and tried to preserve what we had as Hawaiians. Um, we read through all of the books, and trying to understand what they're saying with how we were raised. Um, and, and that's what we built our um, foundation on and the idea for intelligence. And that's what we understand. That's how we understand um, the closeness our kupunas had with their environment.